So this is the Belk Library and Information Commons website. So for those of you that have never really checked it out before, you can get there by the main app search site. There's plenty of links to it from the distance education pages. So there's plenty of ways that you can get to the website. But this is the main site, and there are specific websites for distance education students and faculty because at the library, we don't really see a distinction between you and the on-campus students because you guys have complete access to the library just as if an on-campus student does. The only difference is um, you have a couple of different services that the on-campus students don't have. Like, for instance, you can have books and DVDs and articles mailed and emailed to you. So that's something that we don't offer to the on-campus students. But that's, a, oh, and it's free. I should have mentioned that. Um, you do, you can request articles to be emailed to you. You can request books and DVDs and other media in the library to be sent to your home. Uh, it's a pretty easy process, which I'll walk you through. In addition to showing you guys um, some basic research tips. Now we do go into in-depth more research within webinars and classes that we offer, but just kind of a basic how-to for those of you um, that might have had a few years before you graduated from high school and went to college. So it's just kind of a real basic, oh and of course how to get help, which we'll talk about as well. Now on the main library website, there is a link under top services to distance education. And also if you click on the services link, you're gonna see another link for distance education. So again, don't think that you're different from the on-campus students because you're not, but again, the, the types of services and resources that we offer are slightly different. So this page was basically created to kind of help you navigate through the library website. So if you want to access books, ebooks, articles. A lot of your faculty will put in an e-reserve, so if I've got some faculty in the room, please let me know, and we'll talk about faculty services that are offered. Links to IMC, because the College of Education is the, the number, or the highest number of uh, students that we have within that program, so we link to the IMC, as well as having access to libraries in your area, because it's not commonly known, but the fact is you're part of the 17 UNC school district system. So if you live near the campus at Chapel Hill or Wilmington or uh, Pembroke or any of those places, you can actually take your banner ID into the library and use their resources. So you can access their printing station. You can use their computers. Um, you also have access to their libraries through interlibrary loan. We have a ton of research help here at the library. So please don't think that you're on your own because you're in distance ed. I think that everybody would agree um, that within distance education there is this sense of isolation and that you're kind of on your own but you're not uh, just know that you have tons of help in the library and you have help at your time when you need it so i'm going to tell you guys how to access that as well as the oh so important citation links because you guys will be doing a lot of citation in addition to research so we do offer services for that so just by looking at the main page for Distance Ed, you see a lovely picture of my dog, Jules. Um, that's my hound dog. I love her. Uh, we have links to the Distance Education site, to the University Writing Center. So this is important, too, just so you guys know that you also have access to getting help with writing. Now, they will be the first to tell you that they're not going to do the writing for you, but you can make appointments with them and they will help you with editing. They will review your papers. Uh, they will give you a lot of help. Uh, just give them some notice. Don't just kind of go in the night before the papers do because they will tell you we can't help you. But if you go in within a certain amount of time, you can make an appointment with them to help with writing and citation. So it's a really great resource. You're also going to see the link to app search which is just like the main link that you see on the main page. And you can literally search the catalog this way. So say that you're a social work major, you can just type in social work, uh, wait a little bit. It is a little slow, but it will open up and you can access the library catalog that way. So voila, here's what the library catalog looks like in app search. Now, as you can see on the page, there's a couple of ways you can narrow down your searches. So if you're looking for just books, or maybe you have an assignment where you have to find like five books and 15 articles, you can limit your searches by clicking the tab. Also on the right hand side, you can limit your searches even more. So let's see, if we go to books and more, you can refine your search by format. So if you're looking for eBooks, uh, video, microfiche, uh, any of that information, you can kind of refine your search just by using the left hand side. Now, what's cool about this page, if you've never really looked at it before, is that it does tell you what type of item it is. You can see if it's an e-resource or if it's a book, but it also tells you where it's located in the library. 
So when you guys are requesting, say that you, um, let's see, you really want this book, Social Work, Methods, and Theory. Now, like I mentioned earlier, you guys are distance education students. So one of the services we offer is that we will mail books to your house for free. And it's a really easy process. What you do is you click Request It next to the item that you're looking for. And what it's going to do is it's going to bring you up to this page where it's going to ask you for your username and banner ID. So this is really simple. You just put in your name, enter in your banner ID, and then submit. Now, as you guys are off campus, you're going to see this page a lot when you're using the library website. What it is, it's firewall. You authenticate yourself by entering your name and user password, and it will log you in. So don't be surprised if you see this page a lot when you're using the databases or when you're requesting books. All of us even here on campus have to go through it. But usually if you don't change your cookies or anything within your browsers, you can actually save this information. Um, I'm just not going to do it. So. And this is it. It's really simple. It says request it. Now, as DE students, what you'll all, will do is you are going to put that you are requesting it through your distance learning. Now, whatever address that you have on record with the registrar is the address that we have. So just keep that in mind. And so you can just click that and submit. And that's it. It's really that simple. Um, what it'll do is it'll send us into the process, into the system. Student will pull out that book. They'll process it and mail it to your house. So it can take anywhere from about 48 hours to a week, depending on where the item is coming from. If it's an article, they tend to be a lot faster and they tend to just email those to you directly. So just keep that in mind when you're doing your research, just maybe do a heads up, do it in the beginning when your semester starts, just so you can get all the information that you need. But also too, if you're ever taking a, a coming up to Boone for a visit, you can certainly um, request that that information be kept at, um, oh, okay, you guys have a question. Okay, what is your banner ID? Okay, Ramel, the banner ID will be like a 900 number. It's your student ID. So if you don't have a banner ID, like an actual banner card, you want to talk to your advisor to find out what your banner ID is. You can just put in that information. Um, let's see, Janelle, good, yes, yes. Um, that's correct. It will email it to you after you've registered um, to recognize you. So that's a that's a good point. So for those of you guys that don't have a banner ID, talk to your advisor because again, that's going to be how you're going to get in and out of the databases. So you want to make sure you have that information. Oh, and Ben, good good call. You can also look it up in AppleMed. Okay, excellent. So that's how you can request an item to be sent to you. Now, like I said, if you guys happen to be on campus, you can choose the ASU circulation desk and you can have it sent, or what they'll do is they'll hold it up at the front desk for you and you guys can come on in and pick it up. Um, so it's really up to you how you wanna do it. But that's how it works. So it's a real simple process. Uh, we'll talk more about articles, say that you're looking for articles that ASU doesn't have access to, you can get it through interlibrary loan. Uh, interlibrary loan means that we have access to thousands of libraries in 160 different countries. So chances are, if we don't have it, somebody will. And then we access that book from the other library, and then we can turn around and mail it to you. So that takes a, a slight bit longer process in regards of getting it to you because we're getting it from somebody else. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're doing your research that if you are requesting materials from other libraries, that it does take a little bit to get to you. So what we'll do is we'll head back to the distance education page and go into more detail. So again, what the books does is kind of a, this video just shows you what I just showed you. So it shows you how to do a search and how to get the books sent to you. Ebooks are slightly different. Uh, I found out in our faculty meeting that we have just as many ebooks as we do physical books. So you're talking about 90,000 ebooks. And, you know, you'd think it would be as simple as ordering books from your Kindle and having them downloaded, but it's actually not that simple. For some reason, publishers within the education world want to make it a little more difficult. So we do get our ebooks from several different vendors, and they have their own unique way of accessing ebooks. But, again, it's a pretty simple process. You can do an ebook search. And there's two ways that you can access your ebook. You're going to see a big list. You'll see this icon that shows you that it is an ebook, but it also has online access, which this is the way that you're going to want to access the book online. So go ahead and click on that. 
and it will take you for the page. Um, some books are not available for download, and what that means is that you will go through a couple of steps to make sure you have the proper um, software downloaded onto your computer. It downloads the book onto your laptop or onto your phone, and you're able to open it up, much like your Kindle. I will tell you that not all ebooks will download onto your Kindle because of registration rights that the publishers do put, but you can almost always read online directly. So if you were just to click on read online, what that's going to do is that opens the book right there on your desktop or on your computer or your iPad or whatever you're using. So you can literally read the book directly. Um, it does have some options where you can make some copies. You, can, you can't print the whole book to PDF. Sometimes it'll let you print 10 pages. Sometimes it'll let you print 20. It just depends on uh, the system that you're using. But it does offer citations. It does... It's basically the book. I mean, you can go right to the chapters and all of that information. So it's it's really cool. Um, what's really nice too about using the eBooks is that nine times out of ten they will offer the citation for you. So here in this case it says get citation. Click on it, and then you can choose your type. Uh, we do APA here in the library. Copy and paste. Voila! While you're doing your research, you're getting your citation at the same time. That's very important to note when you're, you guys are using the Belk Library site is that the citation link does appear in just about everything. So remember I showed you guys how to access a book. So uh, say that we typed in again social work. Uh, make sure you spell it right. That's my biggest problem. Yeah, but what's nice is that it kind of knows what you're talking about. So that's cool. So once you click on that. Um, so in this case we were looking at that book again. Click on that title, and what it'll do is it'll provide a lot more information. It tells you, again, where the book is located. Uh, it even maps it for you in the library. But if you look down on the right-hand side, you're always going to see this blue button. It says Cite This Title. If you click on that, again, it will provide you with the citation. So that's what's kind of cool about doing your research on the library website is that you can get the citation in addition. And you're going to find that you're going to really need to understand how citations work when you're doing your research, especially those of you at the graduate level. So we will, you know, like I said, we do offer webinars on how to use that in addition to getting help on citation. But it's just cool to know that you can find it directly on the library website as well. All right. So again, ebooks, articles. Now there's a couple of ways that people like to, to access articles. Now within this link, you're going to see a lot of little videos in introducing you on how to evaluate your resources, how to use app search. I will tell you that our how-to videos are pretty awesome and they're, they're short, so it's not like this webinar where I'm going to talk to you for like an hour. Um, they're usually maybe two to three minutes at the most, but they give you a lot of really great useful information. So say that you guys, you know, you're DE, you're working all day, you come home, you're taking care of your family. It's like midnight or two o'clock in the morning and you're just now able to sit down and do your homework and maybe you're having an issue. Um, I want you guys to note that there is a chat box just about on every page. So if you guys are following me, literally say hi. Say hello, oh, and make sure you spell it right, <laughs> but say hello. See how quickly the librarian will respond to you. The chats are monitored as long as the library is open, so they're monitored pretty, yep, yeah, see, they're super quick. Like, we fight for these chats, I won't lie. We, we all have this open. Um, just testing for class. Thanks. So, you can get help at any time. Um, which is really great. And something else too that we started doing is that we've flipped on to NC Knows, which is a library or North Carolina wide based chat system where you may actually be getting help from a librarian at UNC, Chapel Hill or um, at the Wilmington campus. It's kind of cool how that works out, but you can always get help from a librarian by using our chats. So it's kind of a real quick and easy way to get help, but it's really great too when you guys are working late because that's the time you really need help, and that's when most people go home. So check out the videos, check out the chat, um, just so that you guys know you're not on your own when you're doing your work. But again, article databases by subject. Now this is gonna be kind of different from what you're used to, because I showed you guys the app search box where you can do a search by articles. But I will tell you this, which is kind of strange, but this works in a lot of libraries. Their app search bars, so I'll show you guys by going back to the main page, it's very 
very much like Google, because we all use Google. We love Google. In fact, we even link to Google because we know students use it. And let's face it, it's a great resource. But for, for some reason, and I'm not quite sure why this is, and I know that one of the librarians could tell me, and I should probably ask, but it doesn't cover all of the databases that we subscribe to. We have thousands upon thousands of databases that you have access to. But when you do a search within the app search box, it actually doesn't look at all of those databases. It doesn't connect to all of those databases. So there's a lot of information that you're not getting just by doing that basic search. So what we've done is that we have an article database page that you can access from the DE page by clicking on articles or databases, or you can access it from the main page by clicking article databases and e-research tools. And what this does is this breaks down all of your databases by subject, which for many of you, that's all you need because you're an education major or you're a social work major or you're a library science major and you don't want to have to kind of go through millions and millions of different links that don't apply to you. So as you can see, the article databases and e-research tools does it a couple of different ways. You could search by name. So if you are a diehard JSTOR research person, that's your end all be all because you used it before, you can go click J and go directly to JSTOR. Maybe you need free, um, copyright free, available images, music, and video. If you click on this link, this takes you to all of the databases that have free images and free music that you can access. Um, also, statistics and data. You guys are going to get a lot of that. You know, you need to know the statistic for education majors for the state of North Carolina. By clicking on this link, it will take you to all of the databases that are specific to statistics and data. So again, it's kind of like Using app search is that Google search where you type in social work and get 53 billion hits. Here, it narrows down those hits considerably. And you just look at databases that just subscribe to what you're looking for. Now, for those of you, this is your first time doing research and you're not where, sure where to start. I think, let's, be, let's face it, I mean, we all love Wikipedia and that's the first place we would consider looking, especially if it's a subject that you it's a required gen ed class. It's not your major, but you got to take it and you're going to do, say, an essay about public speaking. I think we all dread that class. Um, no offense to those who teach it, but uh, gosh, I hated that class when I was in college. But you can't use Wikipedia because maybe your professor says, you know, it's really not a reliable source because anybody can go on Wikipedia and write whatever they want about a certain topic. So it's not really considered academic and scholarly, although I will admit they are working very hard to change that. There's a really great database called CQ Researcher, and I call it the academic Wikipedia because it's awesome. So I get there by clicking C. And I wait forever. Oh, here we go. So I'm going to scroll down to CQ Researcher, click on the link, and here it is. So say you're in that public speaking class, and um, this is Boone, so we'll talk about legalizing marijuana. So click on that link. It tells you everything you ever wanted to know about this topic. So maybe you're talking about whether or not it should be taxed or not. Check this out. It gives you the full report, the introduction, the background. Here's my favorite link, the pros and cons. So you get pros and cons from leading experts in the field. And on every page, you guys, check this out, Cite Now. Click on that link. It gives you the citation. Copy and paste. Put it in your paper. You're covered. Um, very, very important. So this page is pretty amazing in that regard that you don't have to worry if this information is legitimate, because there is that kind of uh, trick with using the internet. Sites like .edu, .gov are very good sites because they're created by um, academic institutions or the, the government, like the United States. Um, so you know that experts in the field are writing on those, but maybe Mike Smith's blog on auto mechanics and um, political science may not be a reputable resource. So you have to be very careful about what you find online. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of amazing information out there. Um, but there's a lot of not so amazing information. And when you guys are becoming experts in the field that you're majoring in, you know, your legitimacy and your research has to be spot on because you certainly don't want to be putting the wrong statistics in your information. And you certainly don't want to plagiarize.
because that's not good. So again, CQ Researcher is a pretty awesome resource because it is legitimate, it is statistically sound, so it is a nice alternative to Wikipedia, and it's always a great place to start if you're not sure where to start. So I highly recommend this database as well. Um, some others that are really cool that a lot of students don't know we have access to because you guys are so busy doing you know your major stuff, but if you click on A, we actually have access to Ancestry.com, and this is the part where I lose my students. This is where you guys go off and look up your family and totally miss the rest of the webinar. So that's cool. Like I said, this is recording. But if you click on Ancestry Library, you're in. So you can literally start researching your family. So make sure you've got that Appalachian State University so you're not getting charged and start looking. Um, it's pretty amazing resource if you've never used it before. It's not just for history majors, it's for anybody that's interested in their genealogy. And as long as you're a student here, you have access to it. But remember, you have to access it through the library website. If you Google Ancestry.com and try to get in that way, they're gonna ask you for your credit card information. Don't do that. Go to the Belk Library website, click on article databases, or even type in Ancestry on app search, and it will lead you to this particular site. Um, another great database that's a little well known is called Mango, which I love this site. If you have children, they will love this site. If you click on M, scroll down to Mango Languages, this is awesome. You guys, this site is like Rosetta Stone except better. And you can create your own username and password going through Appalachian State University, and you can learn a new language, um, which is super cool. So it's, you're not going to become fluent, I won't lie, but you will be able to order beer and find a bathroom in any foreign country that you go to. And the way it works is pretty cool. It's very visual, it's very user friendly. Um, you can do, you can find out information about the culture so you don't, you know, go in there and ask for ice in your beer or, you know, ketchup on the table. Um, it's pretty amazing. And again, this, you have access to this uh, in addition to several thousand other databases within your major. So use it, have fun with it. Uh, know that you have help. So if you're trying to access it and you're having problems, you can contact a librarian at any time. So e-reserves, this is the next link within the distance education page. Now I may, I think I've got a couple faculty, I'm pretty, aren't you a teacher too, Ben? I think you are. Um, so this is great for faculty, in case you didn't know, but we can actually put electronic reserves, oh awesome, Ben, thank you. We can put your electronic reserves online for students. So you can do a search by instructor or by course name, so students you can get those articles emailed to you, you can get access to those chapters. All of that stuff is accessed this way. So Ben, if you wanted to put some information on reserves for your class, you can get there through this link or you can check us out on the main page. But e-reserves is really great. It's a great resource and you're unlimited on the amount of stuff. Um, copyright, great. Copyright is protected in e-reserves, Ben, because the students have to go through authentication. So it's not out there for anybody to get to. They have to put in their information so it's only available to students. So we are protected under that educational umbrella because only students and faculty within Appalachian State can access it. So that protects copyright issues. Yes, even for Harvard Business Review, which I do believe we have access to. We subscribe, so we pay for it, therefore it is protected. So again, that's why you guys need to know your banner ID, no problem, because that is how we protect ourselves, that is how we protect you. So definitely get in touch with your advisor if you don't know what your number is, because you will be literally put up, a, up against a proverbial wall in accessing the information from the library if you don't have it. So again, that's how you can access e-reserve. So if your instructor says, hey, it's on reserve, this is how you get there. So again, you can do a search by instructor or by course name and access their information. Actually, I can show you what it looks like. It's cool. So let's say English. Um, or hold on. Social work. That seems to be. Okay. So maybe you're in this particular class and then it tells you where the items are so you can click on it electronic copies available. You'll go through a couple of steps of entering your username and password, your banner ID, that protects copyright, protects you, and it gets you the items. So this is how that would work. IMC, those of you education majors, I don't know if you know this, but we have an amazing instructional material center here in 
the library. You guys take a field trip. Come on up here. Come see me. I always have coffee. Um, I'm in office 134, first floor. But the IMC Center is an amazing resource, especially for you future teachers, because you can literally go into this room and you can create all of your cool stuff for your class for free. So we have all kinds of great construction ideas. Had a um, Our IMC page is just amazing. If you were to check out their Pinterest page and their social media sites, it gives you ideas, talks about projects. You can access this room at any time. So contact the folks at Instructional Materials and get in there and start making some cool stuff for your class. Now again, I mentioned that you have access to libraries. Um, do you have to be an education major to do it? No, Daniel, actually just contact them directly, tell them you just want to go in and play and they'll hook you up. And there's also students there to help. We have student workers and we have IMC librarians. So it's a great place to be inspired, especially in, in regards to instructing. And you don't have to be K through 12. It's really great too for um, teaching college. Now again, through the Appalachian Learning Alliance, we have access to a lot of community colleges. So this is kind of our link to their library page. You guys who are off campus probably already go to these community colleges to go to class, but just know that you have access to their library as well. So you can literally walk into the Caldwell Library, say hi to Deborah Joyner, she's awesome. Um, to the Cleveland County, the Catawba Valley, you can go into any one of those libraries and use their stuff. And they're there, they wanna help you. They love ASU students. Same with faculty, if you guys are there teaching classes and you need to make copies or you need help with something, go talk to the librarians there. Um, they want to they want to meet you. They want you to come by. They want you to use their services. So please take advantage of that. Not just the community college that you're attending, but like I said, any UNC system. So say you're going to Chapel Hill to do some research, take in your card, make sure you get your card from your advisor. Um, go on in there and, and you can you can check out information. You can get um, articles, you can get all of that information just as you would coming here to the Belk Library. So just know that you have access to all 17. Um, and if you're not sure who those are, you can just click on this link and it'll take you to the main page of all the different libraries. So one more thing, research help. This book, mark this link, this should be your go-to link. Um, you have help, lots and lots of help. Not just the library reference chat, which is awesome, especially when it's like one o'clock in the morning and you're trying to get into that database because for some reason you can't access it. But I want you guys to be familiar with our wrap sessions. Now, what this is, is this is research advisory program. This is one-on-one -on -one with a librarian. Um, DE students use this, especially those of you where it's been a while since you've been back at school or it's been a while since you've done research and, and you want to focus beyond Google. What this is, is, this is a chance for you to meet with a librarian by yourself. So you can literally request a specific librarian, fill this out, um, whether you want to meet in person, over the phone, we can do web conferencing like we're doing now, or they even have the AET zone. So for those of you who take classes in that, we'll meet you there as well, which is kind of cool if you've never done it before. It's virtual and kind of awesome. But basically what this is, is this is a service where you know, we will sit down and we will go over whatever you need to know. So maybe you saw some really cool things in this webinar, but you're not quite sure how to start. We can walk you through that. Um, ben, your faculty, maybe you want to know what resources you have for what you teach. We can walk you through that. It's great. And it's really cool, too, especially for those of you where it's been a while because you're just meeting with one person and you're not going to be judged. We will walk you through how to create email, how to go into your As You Learn page. I mean, it's not just research. We, we're very helpful here at the library. We, we want you to have a good experience. We want you to know that you're not alone. So take advantage of this. You know, use this more than once. Use this once per class. So like I said, maybe you're taking public speaking and that's not your major and you're not sure how to do it or what resources are out there. You know, make this a, make a point to, to meet with a librarian every semester because it doesn't hurt, because there's different ways to research, different styles, different resources out there, because I promise you, Google is not the end all be all. There's a lot of really amazing resources out there that you just don't know about. And we would love to meet with you. So just know that you can do this at any time, as many times as you need until you graduate. Um, take advantage of this, it's free. And there are 65 of us that work in the library and believe me, you will get help. And so it's a great, great thing and please take advantage of it. I cannot stress it enough. 
Also, we link to our upcoming online library workshops, which you guys already figured out because, you know, you're here. But also we have useful guides for research. Now, what I've done on this page is I've kind of looked at all the majors that are within DE, and if I've missed any, please let me know. But what you can do is you can just click on your major. So those of you that are following on, just pick, take one at random. Library science, oh no, that's not cool. Um, okay, phew, <laughs> I guess I better fix that link. Um, distance education, so maybe, let's see, um, click on higher education. Actually, I tell you what, I'm just gonna go to the LibGuide directly. Okay, let me give you guys a breakdown about LibGuides. LibGuides are yet another way of accessing information for your particular major without having to go through the entire library website. So I was an anthropology major. I have two degrees in anthropology, actually. So I was an archaeologist before I was a librarian. So I'm going to click on archaeology. Again, there's my dog. But what this guide is, this is very subject specific. So what I've done and what other librarians do is we go through the library website and we pick out databases and books and materials that are very specific to just archaeology. So this way, I'm just looking at archaeology. I'm not getting all of that other stuff that comes out when you do a search. Um, what's really cool about these LibGuides, and two, if you're teaching, so for those faculty members out there, you can contact a librarian, and we will create LibGuides for your class. So if you guys were to check out the LibGuide link, and look into it. You can type in your class just to see if there's one created. But what that is, is that that's actually information that just pertains to the class you're in. So say that you, you teach the same class over and over again, and there's always a research component, or there's always an annotated bibliography. By clicking on the linked LibGuide to that class, that narrows everything down even more in the sense that you're just getting links to databases that apply to that project. Or here's some really great materials that the librarians found that will help you to write that paper. So it's, again, another way of narrowing down all of that information into something very specific. But also what the LibGuides tend to do is they tend to go outside of the library website. So you can link to professional associations, how to get a job in archaeology, which is, of course, my mom's first question. How are you going to make a living as an archaeologist? Well, actually, pretty well, but the jobs are few and far between, and digging up dead folks are just not as fun as talking to live ones. So I learned that very quickly, which is now why I'm a librarian. But you can link. What we've done is we've kind of filtered out all of those fake sites that are on the internet and put in the legitimate sites. So you can you can go beyond the library website within these libguides. So they're really cool and they're really useful. And now, like I said, we don't have one created for every class, although that is our future goal, um, but you'll find that there are quite a few. So lots of stuff for criminal justice majors, education, huge, as you can see. So check those out too when you guys are doing your research because it could be a very quick and easy way to get the information you need without kind of going through everything, um, which you'll do doing a Google search or a basic app search. Citation help. Now, again, I've mentioned citation a lot, and there is a lot of information out there for citations, but I'll be honest with you, I've been doing I've been doing this for 12 years and citations are to me are like learning another language. Um, put a comma here, but not a comma there for this one or semicolon or you capitalize, but not capitalize. And so our citation guides, in addition to the thousands of citation books and generators that are out there can help you kind of weave through all of that. So you can check out guide to citation management software. You can use EndNote or Zotero. Those of you that are in grad school know what I'm talking about. Um, there are really great citation management tools out there that can help you when you're doing your research. And again, you can meet with a librarian one-on-one -on, -one on how to use them. Uh, we teach webinars on how to use them. Your instructors will show you how to use them or at least point you in the right direction of us to help you. So again, there's a, there's a lot of information out there. And so don't think that you're on your own in doing it. And again, for those of you that are faculty, we have lots and lots of faculty services. We can come to your class if you like, and we can teach about library resources that are specific to your class. You can contact a subject librarian. There's everybody. We have uh, librarians for every subject that is 
taught here at Appalachian. You can have materials purchased by the library to use for your classes for your students to have access to. Uh, we could put things on reserve. There's, there's a lot of, of really great services that we have just for faculty. And this is kind of a one page where you can go to get that information. All right, any questions so far, you guys, because I am talking your ear off. So um, sound off, type in your questions in the question box or the chat box. If you're overwhelmed, let me know. If you found something cool on Ancestry.com, please share. If you're learning Pirate on Mango, that is awesome. I'm not kidding, you can actually learn Pirate. I highly recommend it. Are you guys still awake? Shout out to me. <laughs> Thanks, Danielle. Awesome. <laughs> okay, that's the thing about webinars. I never know if you guys are awake or on Facebook or what. Oh, okay, Elsa, great question. Can I go to one of the libraries and check out a book? Yes. Have your banner ID. Make sure you have that. That is your library card. Um, which one of the libraries? Check out that site depending on which one you're at. Um, like I said, this is a link to all of the community colleges that we have access to. Um, same with the ASU distance education. Um, actually, that should link to the UNC system. Yes, here we go. Um, their page was 10 times better than anything I could put. So if you click on that, that gives you a list of all of the colleges that are within the NC system. Um, okay, interested in using the library assistance, Janelle? Great, go to that wrap session page. Click on that, fill it out, give us the dates and times. Perfect. Elsa, yes, it works great. Um, how long can you guys keep the book? Great question. You are DE students, so let me show you how that works. Um, we have, let's see, let me go back to the DE page, because we actually link to loan periods. Uh, I just created that too. Um, here we go. FAQ. Okay, here's all of the information that you will need to know about how you can keep the book. Now, Abriel, what you guys do is you will get these items in a prepaid envelope or box, depending on the information that you requested. So say that you ordered five books of social work and season six of Dexter, it will all come in the same package. You get a prepaid envelope or box to send it back to. So once you're finished, and Elsa, depending on what you order, books you get for 21 days, DVDs, I believe you get for 16, um, but click on loan period. There you go. Scroll down for DE, that'll tell you how many items you can check out. This gives you all of that information that you need on how long you can keep them and how much the fine is if you're late. So also make sure that you send it back. But like I said, you get a prepaid envelope or a box, so it doesn't cost you anything. It does cost you if you're late in returning the items. But I want you guys to note something. If you look on the top of any link on the Belk Library and Information page, you're gonna see this link to my account. You're gonna enter in that name and banner ID again. But this gives you a list of everything that you've checked out. So I've got seven items currently checked out. You can renew online this way. So I wanna renew all of the stuff that I checked out. So I can click renew all and it will renew all of them for me. Or it'll let me know if it's too soon. You can um, record your history, which we actually don't keep account of because that's illegal. Can't, can't let the FBI know what you guys are checking out, so that's a freedom. But if you're curious about your own related searches, you can certainly uh, check your own reading history as well. Um, but basically what this does is this will keep you from getting overdue fines because they're very serious about the overdue fines here. So definitely keep up with that, and this would be the best way. And you can also search for stuff when you're in this kind of... Um, my searches and all of that information, you can you can basically still access the library where you're logged in. So that's just something to keep in mind too. Um, interlibrary loan books is the same. They do take longer to get the books. So Elsie, yes, great question. Yes, because we're getting those books from somewhere else, it will take a little bit longer, but you will still mail them to your house. So just keep that in mind. But again, just some main links on the main website for those of you that may just not want to make that extra step in clicking in. Um, Elsa, if you check, oh, okay, great question, interlibrary loan. Actually, you can access interlibrary loan from distance education, but if all of you want to follow along, click in the interlibrary loan link right here. What you'll do if you're a first time user is you're going to want to click on this and create an account. So you're just going to give them a username and password. Um, 
I would use your app state email as opposed to your personal email, just the way you keep it all together. But this is how you would request items that we don't have. So say that you found the perfect book or you found the perfect article, but there's no app state doesn't have access to it. This is how you would request that book. So I'm going to log in as myself just to show you how it works. And you're going to fill in the information. So if it's an article you're looking for or a book or a thesis, so those of you at a graduate level and you guys are doing research and you want to see what other people have written about the topics, you can access thesis this way. Um, you're going to want to put in as much information as you can. As you can see, the starred ones are the most important, so you're going to want to have that citation handy so you can enter in all that information. And then you click Submit Request. And what you'll get is on your main page, is you'll have a list of everything that you've requested, so you'll know the status right away. You'll know if it's been ordered, you know if it's in route, you'll always be able to gauge where your information is. So it's not like you just put in the request, it goes off to limbo and you never hear about it again until it poof shows up at your door. By using Interlibrary Loan this way, um, you'll know. And this is just for accessing information that App State doesn't have. So again, if we don't have it, Western Carolina doesn't have it, UNC Asheville doesn't have it, uh, you would request those items this way. And again, if you're not sure how to do it, email me, chat with one of the librarians, and we'll walk you through it again. But that's a great question. And um, like I said, you will use Iliad really when you're at the graduate level, when you're doing those hardcore literature reviews, and you're doing all of that research for your, thesis, your master's thesis or your dissertation. Um, but again, every once in a while, you do come across um, not being able to find something. Now, what's really cool is, like I said, we do have access to Google Scholar, or we admit that you guys use Google Scholar, but our Google Scholar is way cooler than the original just Googling Google Scholar because the way that Belk Library have set it up is that we have linked it to our catalog. So say you are looking for a specific article, and if you went to just the regular www.googlescholar.com, and it didn't, you didn't have access to it, because we've all done that. We've clicked on the link to the most perfect article ever, and it takes us to a page where if you send us $150, we will email this PDF to you. Don't do it. Know that you probably have access to it through here. So if you find, if you see that it says find at App State, what that does is that will link the article directly to our databases. So you'll see how that works. Boom, here's the article, here's the PDF. If we don't have it, that's when you're going to go to that Iliad page that I showed you, and you're going to request the item that way. Don't pay for your research, guys. Don't do it. The library can get it for free. It does. It's not that instant gratification. It's going to end up in your email like five minutes after you do it, but you will get it. And save your money for gas because you're driving back and forth to classes, and that's more important. Any other questions? Because, again, I am throwing a lot of information overload. But there's so many cool things about the library site. So again, you know, we've got a list of just all of our movies, DVDs, because, you know, we do have an amazing collection in terms of documentary and a lot of academic stuff. But, you know, we do have all the seasons of True Blood and Dexter and all of those really cool shows. So if you ever wanted to take a break over Christmas and you just wanted to sit through all seasons of The Sopranos, which I did last Christmas, which I highly don't recommend because it kind of made Christmas a bummer, that, um, do it. You, I said we'll mail it to your house. So it's a it's a really great tool. It's an amazing resource. Please take advantage of it. Another really cool link are how-to videos. This is kind of like our tutorial page. We have videos on every title you could possibly think of. Um, you can break them down specifically. You could do a video by title. So if you want to learn how to pick your topics or how to judge popular or scholarly sources, uh, like I said, they're anywhere from two to three minutes long. So it's, it's a really great, real quick answer to your question.